Yo, what's going on? One more time. Now, let me get into the topic I wanted to get into. But before I do that, <clears throat> I got to talk about some stuff that's not related. I think I'm starting to get an allergic reaction to all this goddamn leaves and shit that's going around. It's fall weather. The wind is blowing like crazy. Stuff is falling, going everywhere. <clears throat> anyway, did a test run. I put the video up with the karate situation. Like I said, I'm going to try and put the videos on TikTok. One thing I can't stand is when I try to do shit quick. That's why I take breaks too, aside from YouTube uh, bullshit. Is because <clears throat> every time I try to put something up quickly, the shit should be where it should be at. I think I could just pull it up. Then the next thing I know, you know, it's just not there. Like Tarka Bay had something on Tariq Nashi with the Ku Klux Klan outfits. I'm like, man, come on, man. I made that video years ago. Then I went through my YouTube videos to try and see if it was live or not. And I couldn't find it. And then I went through the list of videos. I find it funny when I got the illegal, so-called illegal downloads. I find it, they, they have the thumbnails of each movie so I can see what it is visually. But my own videos, no thumbnails of the movie. So I might forget the title sometimes. So once I see the cover, the, the avatar, I know what it's about. More so than the, na the name itself. <clears throat> so that's another reason why that slows me down. Then I just get pissed and leave it alone. Then, like I told you in the last video, I tried to do the AV1 encoding. Tried it on the video I just put up. Forgot how long it was going to take. I think it was going to take 13 minutes. It was going, it was only going off of the CPU. Wasn't able to go off of the GPU. Which I thought was kind of weird. Apparently the GPU is still a lot faster than the C this new updated CPU. But when they work together though, this shit is uh, unbelievable. But um, so that's why I went back to the H uh, E V C. The A V one is supposed to be hardware. Uh, you know what? I think it. No, I thought it was hardware decoding and encoding. But apparently, it wasn't encoding on the uh, thing I use. Maybe I got to try that other program, that Cyberlink. Because I usually use the Cyberlink for speed. Cyberlink for speed, Vegas for quality. <clears throat> I mean, Cyberlink can have quality too, but you got to fine tune that one a little more to get professional style quality out of that one. That is with the quality of the video but when it comes to rendering though nothing goes faster than that cyberlink nothing so anyway trying to make sure this is the right topic because I <coughs> took a little note oh yeah before I go on too let me just say this too add a little tidbit you know, if you get that McDonald's app, if you happen to live in a city or area with a, uh, multiple sports teams, like New York, Los Angeles, the DMV, I assume Baltimore might get, get that spillover too, you know, because those areas are close together, even the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay. I know when the Jets win or even play, you get a $2 Big Mac. No, you get a Big Mac, free Big Mac when you $2 purchase. So that's a good deal for that. Any other team wins or plays like Brooklyn Nets, you get free fries with a $1 purchase. And believe me, I'm only spending the $1 or the $2 or else I'm not getting the deal. 
So <clears throat> that's the way that works. That's just to put that out there. But um, the video I was trying to make before is what I'm about to do now. It's about quotas. Quota in, quotas in hiring. That means purposely handing people jobs because of who they are or what they do or where they come from. Which also means that if you're handing people jobs based on that, that means you're also taking away jobs based on people not having whatever it is that they're looking for. I remember Bush won when he was president and people were asking him about I think it was, you know, how it is always revolves around black people. I think people were asking him about hiring uh, more blacks or something like that. And I remember him saying something like he's not for uh, quotas. You know, at the time I had a full understanding of what he was talking about. I had an idea, but not the full understanding. How many people will say that? These people on YouTube, they act like they know it all. Even when some of them, you could tell they could hardly put two words together. And they're learning as they're going along. Some learning how to read <laughs> as they go along. But I have a full understanding of the idea. And I was thinking to myself, well, I, I guess if you... Oh, yeah, it was concerning affirmative action. You know, that was a, a hotbed issue that con conservatives always can't stand. And when they say that they don't like affirmative action, that's cold word for we don't want to give blacks nothing. Now, all of a sudden, you got all these Negro Republicans all over YouTube. I bet you they all disappear after the election is over or the selection. I bet you they all be out of here because that pay that pay be running out. That's why you see all of them hitting the finish line to hurry up and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, they can influence you to vote. The white man or conservatives, they don't realize that these people can't influence shit. But see, they think they can because they said, well, if they give them money, they can influence. But you, they don't understand people, when it comes to their voting, you can't really sway them like that. Because I used to see this female, she voted for the Democrat. I wasn't trying to change her mind on anything but she said I'm I vote Democrat I don't vote by the person I said yeah that's crazy I vote by I voted by the person not by the party I said I told her I said it ain't cool to vote by the party because one of these people might be jackasses but now I'm doing my thing with this female and if that can't influence her what else could so hey I don't know what, what they think. They These people on YouTube, the Tweet Nashis, the Michi X's, and I'm guessing to Harker Bay, the way he was defending uh, the the other side, I hope to Harker Bay isn't taking that stance that if Tariq Nasheed is for this, I'm, I'm against it. Or I'm for the other side just because he's he's against it. Or, or maybe he's hoping to get paid. Or maybe he is. But the Harker Bay doesn't seem to like uh, black Americans, I notice. He always supports uh, foreigners under pseudo-pan-African stuff. I don't even want to get into that. Anyway, let's get into this, uh, <laughs> this quota shit. reason why I say that, because they got this new, new buzz uh, saying, a buzz acronym, DEA. Didn't earn higher, uh, uh, some shit like that. Didn't earn income or some shit like that. You know, more coded language. Didn't earn. So if you see a black person in a position, because that's who they mainly go after, they say, this person didn't earn it. They got placed there. But unlike affirmative action, where... That was designed to put blacks into spots where 
white racists always say, I'm not hiring none of them. That's what affirmative action was for. And of course, the usual race baiters will always say, well, it was mainly for white women and that's who got it. But now we're in a new age. We're just did not earn shit. Which are quotas. Now, Bush one was a Republican. And a so-called conservative and. You know, from what I can recall. Republicans went along with whatever he was uh, about. So why is there this break? Now. Bush one was also against homosexuals. But now Republicans and conservatives are down with it. I guess their ultimate masters, you know who they are. Told them this is the new goddamn script. And you better get with it. And you know Kamala Harris or Kamala, whatever the fuck you pronounce it. You know she's got the script. When you see that shit about that tranny shit. Giving tr- what the fuck you want to give trannies sex changes for? How the fuck is that important? They're fucking criminals. The fuck sex change they need? Fucking they're doing time. If they can't get the shit on their own, why do you want to help them get sex uh, changes? This is a sick ass uh, situation that's happening right now. So, all these quotas, this new age quota system. See, when it was us, the folk being the focal point of getting jobs and shit, everybody was arguing. Niggas like Tariq Nasheed swear up and down. Oh, I ain't voting for either one. Trying to think he's brainwashing people to saying, yeah, I ain't voting for either one either. But everything he talks about is obviously conservative talking points. Now you see the correlation between him and Pan-Africanism strikes back. And why they ended up getting together. Told you all these people related. They're coon agents. Because they're both conservatives speaking the same shit. <clears throat> So-called conservatives. They, to me, they look more like mercenary uh, conservatives. But he mirrors every talking point of the conservatives. They hate black people. He talks down to black people. He tries to switch shit up because he, he's listened to my videos. If you notice... When I don't make videos, they they get a, they're not as deep with their shit because they they can't steal my shit. That's another reason I'm taking fucking breaks. Cause I'm like, man, I'm tired of giving them some ideas and, and, and talking points, and they can get paid, they can get views, but I'm restricted. Like I said, I just looked on my videos on YouTube and saw. The list of shit that they quietly take videos away and shit. And I'm like, damn, I gotta look at look up that list and put them on uh Rumble. But again, I hate fucking Rumble because they they, you know you can only do one at a time, then you gotta wait for the shit to literally process. I'm like, god damn, man, we 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 living in an age where you know you got all these GPU uh NVIDIA uh servers and shit. And you can't get the shit processed quickly? That doesn't make any sense. Matter of fact, I'm starting to do the AI. I'm doing the shit on my computer. I like it better. It's quicker. But I got 32 gigs of RAM. I got to admit, that was the first program that actually taxed my RAM to the point where I didn't have enough. And I was like, damn, maybe I need to get 64 now. But then I, I saw a switch where you can change the rendering to the minimum instead of maximum. And I was looking into that AI shit, and they do say you need a lot of memory for that shit. I said, damn, I just got the shit. I don't want to get 64 because I, I don't think I'm going to use 64 gig of RAM for anything other than that. So 
I mean, maybe in the future they, you know, it might be 64, might be 32 is going to be next. But I always like, like to stay ahead of the game. But anyway, these quota systems, they're bypassing the equality. I don't know if you noticed, know but you look in the NFL, on the sidelines of every team, that's how you know it's a plan. On the sidelines of every team, what do you see? You see females, usually wearing tight pants and big behinds. On the sidelines, giving the water or some type of assistance. Then when they make a play, they try to high five some of the players trying to act like they're one of the fellas. That's a quarter higher. And they put them there because they want people to see that they're there. See, if they didn't want people to see that they're there, they will be behind the scenes. So that's the quota higher. And you know that's the case because they're on every team. That's a New World Order thing. Because you know the NFL is the most watched sport. So that's where they got to put all their propaganda at. Just like when they wear the military fatigues. They want to encourage and brainwash people into joining the military. And then they want to brainwash people into supporting whatever military action that's taking place. So... This, this is these are quota systems. Then, <clears throat> of course, you know about the Mexicans. I told you years ago. Now people going back into my videos, stealing my knowledge, which is fine in that case, and telling you about what their plans are based on what we're seeing. I even heard me yet. <clears throat> Damn. <clears throat> I even heard Meech X bite my style talking about they're going to get foreigners to possibly kill us off because foreigners don't have no skin in this game. They're just happy to be here. We know I've been saying that shit for years, but that's why I can't stand these other people because they, they'll steal my shit. Don't even mention me. I mean, some of the videos I had up, I put on private because I was like, I want to see if they could talk about some shit on their own. Because I know, you. I mean, the shit that I talk about is shit that they're not interested in. Because a lot of these people, uh, paid coon agents, their, their job is to brainwash black people. That's why they always dictate. They talk about Michelle Obama and Kamala Harris dictating to black people. That's what these people do. I told you, that's how you know that they're related. Because it's not by accident that they talk to you the way that they talk to you. That's part of the code. So that they know who is who. From the Sarnettas to everybody. They, they, it's the same thing. Dumb niggas this. Niggas uh, ain't shit. All that. You know, all that kind of shit. You niggas need to do that. They act like that's the only way they could talk to you. Which means that they don't respect you. That's what the fuck it means. Because they don't talk to anybody else like that. And these same people who are part of it, the Tariq Nashis, the Michi X's, the Pan-Africanism Strikes Back, the, the list goes on and on. They'll tell you this when they're talking about Democrats while they're doing the same shit. So they're playing you again. I mean, that's all they're doing is playing you. For their white masters. And in Michi X's case, she is part of the white master. So. That I don't like. But what can I do? What can I do? I've been talking about it for years. All they do is suppress my goddamn channel. Now I like this new equipment I got. Because the shit, I ain't going to tell you no lie. The shit is, is is doing its thing. It's doing its thing. 
I mean, my other system was doing this thing too. This one's really doing it. Uh, so that's encouraging me to make more uh, videos again because, you know, I just like looking at it doing this thing. But these quota systems, they're there everywhere. The female thing. That's why they have the, uh, every time there's a video game out, what's that one? Awakening nine as the East Indian woman. I'm looking at the reviews of that game. People are saying that I don't like the character. The main character is ugly. White people, they don't like it when the lead character in the movie or a video game is a black person. In case you don't know about this game, the lead person is an Indian, East Indian. Uh, that Alan Wake too. They're complaining because it's a black police woman. Now, that's different, even though we know that's a part of an agenda. But, and they're calling that a did not earn. I'm like, that doesn't make any goddamn sense. There are black female cops, which to me, they shouldn't be. I'm going to be honest with you. Because they fuck up. They're dangerous. That's beside the point. But my fact, no, it's not beside the point. That's a part of the point, too, because whenever you see events around the world, particularly in the U.S. and U.K., have you noticed there were there have been an unusually high rate of high ranking female cops, commanders, uh, deputy chiefs and all that kind of shit, even some chief of police? Uh, being spokespersons for events. You remember when Kobe Bryant died, you remember who was speaking, doing this talking most of the time. You, th you, you can go down the list. It's to try to put, I don't know what the goal is, unless they're trying to tell us that they're going to kill men off, but men are in control of this shit. You know what kind of men. But they keep trying to put females out there. They do it with the movies. Uh... Star Wars, Disney ruined the goddamn Star Wars, not because they put a woman in control or women in control, because the shit was garbage anyway. Uh, even if they put men in control, but they obviously made the little Ray powerful, more powerful than the goddamn Emperor. Uh, Luke Skywalker was a non factor. And in that second one, you know, they pushed all the men to the side and made everybody powerful woman. And made all the men a dimwit. Same thing in these Marvel movies. And of course, that alien Romulus, the same shit. That Deadpool and Wolverine. They made the most powerful character in the movie a woman. And if the shit wasn't called Deadpool and Wolverine... You could bet that they uh, would have made them women. Then you got that Thor loving uh, Thunder. They just had to make a female Thor, of course. But they do this. And they use black people to Trojan horse others into their situation. By trying to get us to say, hey, some of us are going there too. This ad I keep hearing about a New Jersey lieutenant governor. Apparently a black woman. I said, you see, when I, that's another thing I noticed too. When conservatives, they might appoint blacks to things. And the blacks might have better education than... The, the white people that's over them. But I noticed over the years that they usually only give black people secondary jobs. Lieutenant this, lieutenant governors, they don't let them be, become governors. They, they'll let the East Indian become governors, Carolina and Louisiana. And if you're a black person trying to be a governor, you got to be looking almost white like Doug Wilder and 
like like the guy that was a uh, governor of Massachusetts. And he had to go, and you got to go to the finest schools. You got to be like, guess who's coming to dinner? You can't date our daughter, nigga, <laughs> unless you got over the top education. But if you're just a run of the mill black man, ah, uh, your black ass ain't coming to dinner. That's how they do it. But see, Sidney Poitier was a Caribbean, so he was fine. But this is how they do, man. And um, then you got other quotas that they get slick on. Such as, if you need a black face, hire a Caribbean or an African or even a clearly black Hispanic. But usually they'll just hire Mexicans over clearly black Hispanics so that they won't give more black people jobs. So it's like when you watch baseball. And by the way, I knew the Yankees going to lose. They, they just got overwhelmed. Uh, but when you watch baseball, you see the Hispanics. Baseball is an easy sport to play. Some people might say no. But ask yourself this. If you don't know how to play any sport, what sport do you think you could pick up quicker? Baseball or basketball? Some people might say basketball, but if you don't, I mean, if you don't have skills at all in any sport, what's easy to play? The harder sports to play when you don't have any skill at all will be football and hockey. Hell, might, might even be soccer, too, if you want to play that. Because football, that, that language... That's why people got to grow up with football. They can't just, um, you know, turn 18 and say, I want to start playing football. That's why they got to start playing as kids because you got to get that language together. That's why you got quarterbacks that come into the league, probably like that Richardson guy and that uh, Bryce Young and a whole bunch of others down the line. They might. So they can get by in college improvising and not really knowing how to read defenses and play offensive plays that much. But then when it comes to the NFL, where defensive players, linemen, everybody that you don't think knows how to game and knows what schemes are, knows how to read defenses and offenses. A lot of people don't think that they know what they're talking about and what they're doing. But they do. And quarterbacks have to know these things. You can't be a quarterback and have everybody else knowing what the fuck you should be knowing. That's why they can't play. They can play physically, but they can't play mentally. That's why Joe Flacco can come in and do what he has to do. And that's why Andy Dalton can come in and he can't do what he has to do. <laughs> And that's why uh, Sam Darnold can go in to a different team. You notice how he was with the Jets, couldn't do nothing. With the lowly Panthers, couldn't do nothing. With San Francisco, hey, he started getting something. Now he, now he's on his way. You got to know the language of the NFL. Basketball, you can freestyle. They keep trying to get rid of us in basketball. But nobody does it better. But they keep importing people. And if you watch comments, because where I watch the, uh, these games at, on these uh, websites, you see the comments, they always hate black people, but yet they can't keep themselves from always coming to us. They got to keep watching us. But they're really jealous. That's, that's what it really is. So they try to water down the NBA. They took the MLB uh, away from us and they don't want to call these Hispanics black for some odd reason a lot of these motherfuckers are blacker than anybody I've ever seen 
And then they ask how come black Americans aren't in the MLB as much anymore. Well, you drove us away. First, you didn't want us in to begin with. <laughs> then once we got in, you see, you see who became among the best. And then for some odd reason, they act like they got to go to the Dominican Republic and Cuba and shit to grab a baseball player and shit. Like these motherfuckers are the best. I mean, baseball is easy. I'm telling you, it's easy. Um, but that's quota. See, they drove us away from that. And I keep telling people, people been repeating this ever since. I do the knowledge on the shit. I don't just talk. The most popular sports are the ones with the most black people in the sports. Now, this NFL, they got a lot of these Africans in them and, and Haitians, but they play supporting roles. They don't play the skill positions. You know, they're tacklers because they got these, you know, wide bodies and big, uh, thick bodies. Samoans might get in there, but they don't really play the skill position. That's us. And the white man's been trying to hold on to the quarterback position. For the longest time, because that's the commander, that's the slave master, that's the thinking position. That's why they criticize Lamar Jackson so damn much. And every black quarterback, I don't know if you, I said this before, whenever you watch a game, I swear they must go through some kind of training, at least the white uh, play by play guys. You listen to Tony Romo, Aikman, every time a black quarterback. I was watching that Pittsburgh Steelers game against the. Uh, I think it was the Jets. I think that was the last game they played. And they said, "Oh, Russell Wilson came up short on that throw, even if the guy caught it. He overthrew him. He underthrew him. If he would have done it like this, it would have been an even better catch." If the motherfucker caught through the shit and it was caught, what is there to criticize? But they do that every time it's a black quarterback, except for Patrick Mahomes, because they can't deny what he's about and he's half white. But see, that's why Lamar Jackson, in a way, I almost think that they got artificial extra praise for Lamar Jackson because they want him to be successful the powers that be so they can show or either that they may want them to fail. They might be hyping them up so much that they want them to fail. So you got that. That's why I like this Jaden Daniels. Cause this is, you know, my man got the serious accuracy to come out of nowhere. Uh, black quarterback. Say, I want the kind that don't make mistakes can read defenses and know what the fuck they doing all around. So that way, they can't critique them heavily. And then when it comes to sucker quarterbacks like Andy Dalton, he gets more praise than he deserves, and he's still in the league longer than he needs to be. And they try to act like he was good, but when Marvin Lewis was uh, the coach of the Bengals, they try to say he, he needs to go. And Andy, Andy Dalton was carrying him, but yet you see what happened after Marvin Lewis left. Andy Dalton was a sucker quarterback, the kind that can't get nothing going. Trevor Simeon kind, the kind that makes you say, man, damn, this, is, this shit is boring. I don't even want to watch the game because this guy is so boring. And he got a chance to get a job. And he showed that he just can't get it done. But my point with that is the white sucker quarterbacks get more rope than the halfway decent black quarterbacks. Black quarterbacks, you can't do the shit within the season. You, I mean, they, they like benching your ass. But white quarterbacks can have a losing record their first season. Improved by a couple of games the next and then they just keep them starting. Until they realize them, like uh, Daniel Jones. I mean, you listen to the people on the radio, they make excuses and trying to say he gives them the best chance to win. I'm like, not, not from what I'm looking at. <laughs> Shit. But that's the way it is. It's part of the, the quota system. 
Then you got something else I noticed. I noticed too, though, when I was looking through the videos, I noticed the video I made with the straight hair. No, the beauty standard one. White beauty standards for black people. I noticed that that one was uh, put on private by YouTube. I don't know why they got a censor shit. One of these days, I might come out with a website. One of these days. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Uh, so I can keep a, a true accounting of what the fuck is going on. Uh, but what I've been noticing, even when I watch these auditing videos, even around New York, if you don't know that by now, you watch some of these auditing videos that it, it'll show you what the fuck is going on from coast to coast. It's the same routine. Black people. Like you look at any skyscraper, fancy building, apartment building. What are black people doing if they get the job? Security, loading, truck driver, shit like that. They can't even be head of security. Always has to be the white man. Head of security. <clears throat> Even police supervised always got to be somebody else unless it's a heavily black city. Then that's the only time black people can become high ranking uh, officers getting a lot of money because a lot of these cops uh, jobs pay a lot. That's why I told people years ago, get a job as cops because you keep letting these Hispanics become cops and these others. Now, East Indians have become a lot of cops. You're going to be asked out, not from a job perspective but from a if they send the order to come fuck with us perspective who are we going to have nothing but foreigners you shouldn't have any cops in this fucking country with foreign accents the white man is the one to blame he's giving these people all these things Cubans in Florida Guyanese New York Mexicans, California. Mexicans, Texas. Europeans. I don't trust the British when I see them here. Becoming cops. For what? Why would you come from any country, especially a dangerous country, and then you come to the United States to become a cop? Why would you do that? If you come from a rich country, Italy, UK, France, even Australia. Why would you want to come to the United States to become a cop? Doesn't make any goddamn sense. But just keep looking, watching. Business owners. It's like they got to be fucking from other countries. They're usually Asian, Mongo Asian, or East Indian. And then I was thinking to myself, with the white man having a secret alliance with these East Indians that apparently have been in effect for quite some time. And the way you know that it's a secret alliance is because, like I said many times on videos, they let them own anything. Two of them own sports teams, the Sacramento Kings and the Jacksonville Jaguars. They don't make a big deal. They don't. They might say, okay, well, it's a South Asian. But they don't say that this is a black man or a black Asian. They don't say so they don't want to call them a black Asian. Or they don't want to make a big deal out of who the fuck they are. All these tech companies. They don't make a big deal out of them. Now you got other people talking about that. I've been talking about that for years because I follow that shit. They don't follow that shit. All they do is steal material because they're getting paid. Well, I'm not getting paid. 
these people have so much money it ain't funny. These people are now really basically running the infrastructure of the United States and the UK and other European countries, which I find to be outright unusual. I mean, given the fact that the white people have done everything to prevent us from coming up. Talking about subversion. Not well, we can't be sub subversives, but these other people can be. Uh, and they say, we don't want blacks taking over. They're going to take over. Why would you be fearful of us taking over? But yet these people from these other countries are literally taking over. And they look the other way. They act stupid. And that was part that was segueing into my other one. I guess I might as well do it on this too. And then I kept thinking to myself, when you look on that Black Everything site and you see how recent it was since blacks and mulattoes were in control and how they usurped us, from that point on, I mean, we're talking 1700s, early 1800s. Once they got complete control, their goal is to make sure that we don't regain control because that's what thieves do. They want to take and they don't want to give it back because if they give it back, it's like, damn, man, I, I didn't get nothing out of taking it. So that's why they always say they shut black people out of society. Unless you're a Mason, of course. As far as I can see, I don't see the benefits of Freemasonry for black people because I even though I'm sure these Indians are Masons somewhere down the line and these Mongol Asian Asians are Masons somewhere down the line because you got to be you look at a lot of these logos on these Asian companies and, and video games and shit you always see three mountains that's, that's a familiar logo whether it's explicitly mountains or Disguise as A's or anything else. It's always got to be three because that's the part of the shit you got to put forth. Plus, again, you know, small hats are in control. Why do they worship Egypt so much? Another discussion to be had. I'm putting the pieces together. I'm putting the pieces together. Now, the question is are we going to be saved in the end? Or did they just say, you know what, man, motherfuck all this. We got it, so fuck it. I'll let you think about all that. But um, I've noticed that the white man, the Black Everything site, which is what Dr. Francis Crest Welsing would talk about. See, a lot, of, a lot of you may not know about that part. And if you hear the shit from a Negro like Tariq Nashi, who's trying to come out with a documentary, he didn't, he didn't like her. He's just coming out with, trying to figure out new material. Matter of fact, if somebody know where to uh, get that microphone check and his AI generated characters, uh, let me know. Because um, I want to at least check it out before I critique it. Um, but I can't find this shit on the usual channels, which, which goes to show how low down this shit is. But uh, somebody put the link in there. I'll put it on a Google Drive or something. <laughs> That's another way of getting around file sharing, so to speak. Um, but you got people like him trying to come out with a documentary on Dr. Francis Quest Welsing, but her theory and assertion on white people, I heard before that black everything site, which was white people are mutant albinos. seems to be coming to pass that white people must have already known it because they kind of gave you the clues right before your faces. One of the clues, or a few of the clues are, now watch them start stealing this. Keep in mind, I'm talking about it right now. See, you're talking about years and years and years of research and study. For me, these people don't study this type of shit. 
Black people will study Freemasonry. That's the extent of their knowledge. Just like when Malcolm X with the Nation of Islam. The extent of his knowledge as far as what he could talk about officially came from Nation of Islam folklore. Now, I know some Nation of Islam people probably, folklore? What you talking about folklore? If you don't want to call it folklore, prove it. Same thing with that Morris Science Temple nonsense. That's why Taharka Bay won't let me on. Not that I've been asking lately. He won't let anybody on but people he knows because he knows nobody's going to challenge him on that Morris nonsense. And how do we know that it's nonsense? Number one, it's not real. And two, he can't prove that it's real. None of them can. That's why they don't even attempt to prove that it's real. They just run away from the issue altogether. So, you got that theory, which is a sound theory. Because when you read what the Romans said about them, they said that the uh, whites are, they he didn't say whites, I, I'll be factual. He said the people of the Germany tribe. He said that they have bright red hair piercing blue eyes and they are unlike they are a race unlike unto themselves unlike any other seeing shit like that plays into if you grew up with watching shit I've been watching racism uh, the racist groups they always talked about white purity Aryan nation that's what they were more about than the Ku Klux Klan White purity. They didn't accept Italians. Some of them would say, okay, well, some Northern Italians. Then you realize that the Northern Italy is where the black man <laughs> was Roman. So, you know, original white people have to have red hair. That's why, if you notice what white people no matter the nationality, whether they're from Europe or Asia, they have red hair, blue eyes. That's, that's a constant. So, you got to understand this. That's one thing that unites them. They knew that they, they are albinos of the, the Indians. Number one, it's the Indo-European language groups. That's number one. That's the first clue. Nobody ever stopped to think why, how is Indo and European, how are, they, how are they related? They're not next to each other. All you got to do is look into the shit. And you know I had a video up there with cycle. Uh, Pathy is talking about that shit. He tried to play stupid. Or maybe he wasn't playing. I don't know. But, but <laughs> even if he wasn't playing, he I think he was playing stupid on some things. Uh, then you got Hitler. When he talked about the swastika as our symbol, because that's the symbol of India too. And it's the symbol of uh, Japan, China. I was watching a uh, a Sonny Chiba movie. I think it was on Tubi. Because be before I had downloaded the movies. And um, the, I think it was the original Street Fighter. He went to that dojo. And they all had the swastika on their outfits. Then I think the one on Tubi, I was like, I, I, I didn't see the swastika. They must have... Uh, did some kind of digital enhancement or something. I'm like, that's crazy. But the swastika was their symbol. Indo-European swastika. And on that Black Everything site, the language of Lithuania. 
so that it had common out a lot of commonalities with Indian Sanskrit. Then I went on YouTube just to see if I could hear this shit. And they got an Indian lady with the Lithuanian guy speaking back and forth with each other, communicating. He's speaking his Lithuanian language. He's speaking Sanskrit. And they know exactly what each other one, each one is saying. I mean, do you need more evidence? Why do you think they're so evil and hate, but envy black people, but hate at the same time? You know, people who are jealous haters, you know, they hate what people had and how people look. You know how females do. If they come across a female who's looking good and they think, oh man, she got the body, got the face, got the hair. I wish I had that. So they might try to start some shit on purpose just so they can have an excuse to uh, mess her up. But they don't realize, okay, well, even if you killed her, that's not going to make people come to you automatically. People don't think like that. Just let her be who she's going to be. And you be the best that you can be. But of course, black women don't even like their hair. That's why they're wearing these tacky ass wigs. But anyway, so you got the swastika, you got the language uh, group. Then you got the other thing that they throw at you it's right in your face. But see, you got black coon agents who made sure that they insert something in your brain. To not make you think about the obvious. How many times you've heard Israelites and others talk about. They come from the Caucasus Mountains. They're a caveman from the Caucasus Mountains. But you know the Caucasus Mountains not really in Europe. Now they're trying to somewhat throw it in Europe. But that's not in Europe. It's, it's, it was always Asia. That's why they call them a Cauc Asian. And I will take credit for being the first one to point that out years ago on YouTube under other names. Some of my channels got taken down, but if you see it, anything in the writings and a lot of those videos that I commented on got taken down, I would always put spell caught with a lowercase c and Asian in capitals. That's me. No, no matter what the name is, that's me. Because it's clear. See, that's why they didn't, they don't call themselves Europeans. They might say it in this country, say, oh, well, I'm a European American. But the official designation is Cauc Asian. Because it's from the Caucasus region of Asia. And if you know the knowledge, you know that Black people were there first. And Uncle Tom's listening right now. They're going to say, nah, man. Believe me. Trust me. A lot of that Afrocentric shit. When I first started hearing about that shit as a teenager, I used to say to myself, man, get out of here with all this shit. <laughs> I used to say, ain't no way in hell. But then when you start doing the knowledge, you're like, damn. And you do the obvious that, number one, you look at artifacts, there's no mistaking a black man for a white man. The only one, only time things can get a little confusing is when there's race mixing. But even with that, you're always going to find something black about the mixed person. That's why I put up that uh, Queen Elizabeth one on my Facebook because and I, I let it be known, man, we always, I know every time I saw her, I said, man, that's a bizarre looking individual. <laughs> you know, I'm like, how the fuck can somebody look like that? <laughs> you know, she got kinky red hair, Afro hair. And back then, I, when I was a little kid, I, a teenager, I used to say to myself, but hold up, how is this possible if... 
black swan in Europe, black swan in North Africa, but they're supposed to be white. Why does she have kinky hair? And if it was simply a hairstyle, if there were no black people to get an inspiration for the hairstyle from, why would she have that kind of hairstyle? Because <coughs> you gotta have, you gotta be able to see something in order to try to copy it. Because if everybody in your world had straight hair, you wouldn't be thinking that somebody had any other kind of hair unless they were there or unless you were them. And then in movies, they even fabricate her in the movies too because they make her look so porcelain white and, and with the red hair and she's looking scary. But you notice that they make her with wavy hair. They don't make her with kinky hair that she had. Afro. What's an afro? Obviously, she was mixed. But they said she was darker and she wore that uh, egg white mixture on her face to make herself very white. And if you look at that painting I put up, look at her ear. Good thing that artist was on point. Let that ear slip out and you can see the real color. But um, that goes to show the pressure that black people were under as white people were constantly taking over. She probably couldn't even show that she was mixed. She had to suppress blackness, even though they knew what the fuck she was about. It's fucking crazy. And you think that's a joke. It's like whatever we came up with in this country, mob, mobbing, sports, uh, whatever the fuck we came up with. They come around and take control of the shit. Apparently that's what they do. You gotta counteract that but they leave the mongo asians alone they leave the black asians the east indians alone maybe because when you think about it and the small hats come from kazaria turkic uh, tribes and you see some of them even got that mongo turk look I think it's all an Asian coalition because I, I noticed every person from Asia in this country especially but all in, in, the, in the white world western world they're not oppressed they can come here live it up get rich own shit participate in the government they're not oppressed they're, they're it's like they're the junior supervisors of the white man. They're not disrespected. <laughs> now you got a so-called East Indian running for so-called president. And they keep talking about her so-called blackness versus her non-blackness in India, but that's where the blackness is. But see, it's funny how if she, her father is supposed to be black, then she's black, even though he's lighter than her mother. But if she's East Indian, then all of a sudden she's not black. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. But it goes to show they don't want to disrespect the East Indian. Their, their progeny. They're connected by language. I told you when I was in a Target one time, I heard these East Indians speaking to each other. I swear to you, I thought that they were speaking German and they could have been speaking German, but it sounded a little bit different. And I knew it wasn't Dutch because Dutch, you know, they got those, you want to talk about the Baltimore accent, you know how we do and all that kind of stuff. You, you know, the, the Dutch got, got a lot of that ooh and do and all that kind of stuff. Ooh, verbin and all that kind of shit going on in it well, straight up German is just a little harder a lot harder uh, so they got the connection that's why a lot of these East Indians are fucking arrogant because they know they have no problems that's why you think about it from 
coast to coast in Asia. Think about it. Tell me who is oppressed in the United States. You can start with Turkey. And I told you a million times, Turks are not from Turkey. They're not from anywhere in the Mediterranean or even anywhere near it. And a lot of people still don't get that shit. When I tell them, they don't get it. But you got to look it up on your own. I know it's Turks. That's just, that's a hard group to follow. It is. I'm not going to tell you no lie. It's a hard one to follow. Just like Arab is a hard one to follow. But most people think they know what an Arab is or what one's supposed to look like. But when you ask them, they can't describe it. Same thing with Turks. But I've shown you what original Mongol Turks look like. Because they're the ones with the originators of the language. Back in Mongolia, Siberian areas. And they just went on a conquering spree. And that would also be the Mongols. That's who they are. But let me say this. From Turkey, they're not oppressed when they come here. They come here owning shit. Uh, you know, they were in cahoots with the British and French empires in the so-called Middle East. Arabia, anybody from anywhere in Arabia, again, they're classified as white. That's a privilege protection when you come here. And people like Tariq Nashi lie and try to say East Indians are classified as white, which they're not. But they're still protected. Mongol Asians are classified as white. I mean, they're not classified as white, but they're protected. As you know, everybody knows that now. Even the fake uh, uh, shit going on where they claim that China is an enemy and they don't want China to have technologies and all that kind of shit, but yet China manufactures every fucking damn thing for the United States almost. Except military weapons. Why do you, because, you know, there's a controversy they don't want them to have the top NVIDIA uh, GPUs. Even if you don't get the top one. Shit, second from the top ain't bad either. Hell, they can... They got engineers, they can just modify and add all the RAM they want to the shits if they wanted to. And the fucking guy who runs NVIDIA is a motherfucking Chinese. I think he's Taiwanese, you know, if you want to get technical. And the lady who runs AMD is Taiwanese. So you think they're going to not let their motherland get the technology? Come on. They've been uh, working their way around and shit any goddamn way. China and Russia, they've been getting the GPUs from, through India. Why are they in BRICS? Answer that question. Why are they in BRICS actively going against the West, but yet they run the fucking infrastructure of the West? Answer that one. Now, India and China are nuclear armed. They got all those people. But let's suppose that the United States said, you know what, man, motherfuck this. We got to go to war. All these East Indians are in place now in this country. They can actually stop some things, hurt some things. But of course, the white man can go back to the way he was 100 years ago and just take this shit. He did it to us. How come he ain't doing it to these other people? They're all Asians. That's why. That's why. That's why you see a lot of these East Indians are fucking arrogant. They stick with the white man. They go with the white man. I told you how I many. And what I'm telling you is not bullshit. These different places I move to when they see me coming in and I'm late. They see me coming in <clears throat> after a while they move the fuck out. I go to this pizza hut in Scarsdale every now and then. Reason why is because there are pizza huts around my way just disappearing. And I heard that they're really on the uh 
having a real problem. Pizza Hut, they might, as a brand, they might be out of there closing stores left and right. So Pizza Hut, they might be out of there. Um, owned by Indians. You know, I don't like Indians preparing my food. The only other people they got working there are some Africans. They don't hire us. I only bought this shit because I was really craving a good old fashioned Pizza Hut pan pizza. Now I realize you can get you a Domino's one that's similar to it, but I wanted a Pizza Hut one. I'm like, shit, man, uh, you know, I just can't order a Pizza Hut when I want to. So I said, let me get this goddamn Pizza Hut, man. And one, you know, Scarsdale is a rich town. You got, uh, of course, the Indians buy there. They buy, they, they support the Indians. You got Indian, I mean, Indian execs everywhere. I don't know. I swear, I, su I don't know how they finesse these motherfucking jobs. Some places, these motherfuckers will have jobs that only they have. Nobody else has. Job tight and paying a lot of money. They only go after the high paying shit. I, I know once they're in the door, they bring in more and take over. That's why whenever you call customer service anywhere, it's always coming out of India. Which is a fucking pain in the ass. Because they're hooking everybody up. But see. Why do you have the mother country of India. In bricks. By challenging the West. And the, the economy. Now I know the small hat. You know they feel their doctrine says that they're superior to everybody. Even though that ain't really their doctrine. But you know. Uh, that they created. But. They feel, hey, man, we got, I think part of it, you got to reel the people in, get your enemies behind, uh, go behind enemy lines and shit, reel them in, pick their brains to see what, what, what's up. But still, they're not messing with them. Like I said, even organized crime, you don't hear about Indian owned shit getting shaken down by organized crime. I'm like, all these fucking businesses they have, how come nobody's fucking with them? Nobody's fucking with the Chinese. I know they got their triad shit. Nobody's fucking with the Chinese. But when it comes to us, they don't want us to have shit. Black people are so stupid, we're reduced to just selling drugs and robbing people on the street. The fuck is that? I mean, that's not elevated crime. I mean, a hundred years ago, people were doing better than that shit. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking crazy. But... That's the connection. You look at the so-called Arab. Now people will say, well, they got the oil. But then you look at Yemen. You know, that's, that's a broke country. I don't know what their oil situation is like. <clears throat> but no, nonetheless, whether you're a white so-called Arab or black Arab, you come to the United States, they classify you as white. That's that's the protection. That's a, their way of saying you're okay with me or you're not going to have any problems, at least on paper. When you look at a guy like Robert Sala or Saleh, it's funny how they kept calling him Sala, but he can't cry racism. Why? Because he's classified as white in the United States. That's why. Ilhan Omar classified as white in the United States because she's an Arab. You're in the Arab League, you're an Arab. Russians classified as white. You know, you got 50 million different types of Russians. You got YouTube. I constantly watch uh, uh, shows on Russia's uh, far eastern regions just to see what the fuck is going on. And you got Asians out there speaking Russian and loyal to Russia. Because that's their country. And they, a lot of people disassociate them as Asian. 
because they speak Russian. I told you I've been watching these Kung Fu movies, especially these Jackie Chan shits that I missed. And some of them take place involving Russians. And then you forget Russia borders all these countries and shit. <laughs> so, of course, they would have interaction with the Russian. Russia, enemy of the United States, supposedly. They come here, organize crime, no problem. Any other kind of Russian business, no problem. China, Chinatowns, if you got damn where. Koreans, no problem. You could be a North, North Korean or a South Korean. Come here, no problem. Uh, Iranians, supposed to be one of the top enemies. Come here, you're classified as white. And a lot of stupid people, like Tariq Nasheed and others, keep calling them Arab. Even Sarah Sutton Seti, calling them Arabs. They're not Arabs. They're not even Persians. Persians are black people with Jackson 5 Afros. I show people this shit. You show people the fucking evidence. One person, some white guy, tried to say, nah, nah, those uh, artifacts that the Persians made of themselves with the Jackson 5 Afros and black skin, that ain't the real deal. Let me show you this painting from uh, a few hundred years ago. I said, man, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit fuck you gonna introduce a painting fuck out of here with that shit man I'm talking about the artifacts that they left there ain't no denying an afro but the white man and his coon agents all of a sudden they don't know what the afros look like go on YouTube and, and bring up the silvers or the Jackson 5 or watch any black exploitation movie like the Mac or something you'll see some afros Persian style afros. And um, you know, these people today they'll tell you, nah, they ain't, they ain't what you think about it. Now, now you got people today saying niggers talking about the afro is not unique to black people. Other people got afros too. This is the new bullshit that they're coming out with. I'm like, man, and you want to know why we are in the state that we're in because of these coon agents. But now the rhetoric is so silly. They think that black people are that dumb. Now you see why they don't promote education among black people because they want us to stay stupid so they can keep trying to manipulate. It seems the only way we can get over, so to speak, is we got to become a part of the uh, Masonic Brotherhood. And I'm asking... Maybe they know more than... Well, I'm sure they know more than me. When is it going to benefit us? That's that's what... I'm, as, as a group. Now, I, I really see that the... There are different black people with different groups and different agendas. Some next to the white man. And they got their agendas. And they probably don't even have any... Uh, plans on getting with others. So, for, so far, nothing is working for us on our behalf. But let's get back to these Asians. Let's go from Arabia to India. You already know what they do. Bhutan, uh, Nepal. Uh, what's next over that? Uh, Bangladesh. None of them have a problem when they come here or to the UK. Even though I think they've had more problems in the UK than over here because they will call them black in the, in the UK. Uh, and of course you got Southeast Asians, Vietnamese, another country that the United States went to war with. And it's still communist. The communists won in case people don't realize it. <laughs> that's why it's communist because they won I think China and Vietnam probably the only in North Korea the last communist countries but they're sticking to it uh, Cuba I don't know if that's still communist or not 
And if it is, they don't really flaunt it like that. Or at least the United States doesn't flaunt it like that because they don't want it to be known that the communists would have won. And if, if it's still communist, then it comes down to why did they take out Kennedy? Because they call Kennedy a communist, which is why he had to be taken out because he was because of his stance on the Cuban Missile Crisis. But if that's the case, how come they didn't wipe out communism in Cuba? Shit doesn't make sense. That's why you got to analyze all the facts to see what the truth is. But Vietnam, enemy of the U.S. Vietnamese come here. Live it up. Live in, in all these groups, these Asian groups. You will find in middle class, middle class and up <laughs> neighborhoods. You'll hardly find them in lower middle class and below neighborhoods. You don't have to believe me. Go to your nearest rich suburb. Uh, and I ain't talking about don't go to the areas where the stores are at. No place where shopping, commercial shit is. And if you're, you know, concerned about driving around these areas, you know, get a nice car. Keep it washed so you won't draw attention to yourself. That's another thing I keep trying to tell black people. If you're up to no good. And you don't want to be followed by police, keep your car washed. I'm telling you. Because <laughs> they're not looking at that. Even though they got these uh, plate readers now that tell you if the shit is stolen or not. If the shit is stolen, doesn't matter what the fuck you do. But if, <laughs> other than that, keep your car washed and then they won't really alert. Now, I, as I'm driving around some of these rich towns. Because some parts I have to. You will find sometimes, you know, a cop might silently uh, go behind me like I was in. Well, this I guess Jersey City's rich. But I was in there the other day. A cop was behind me, but part of it is because the traffic was crazy. Uh, maybe you know, you know, when they're behind you, they ain't just behind you to drive to get to where they have to get to. They're checking you out, running your shit. So, cop was behind me. You got cars in the street doing all trucks in the street doing all types of crazy uh shit. So I got zigzag in and out of the streets and shit. <laughs> Cat was behind me and shit. He ain't do nothing, but I'm just saying, you know, they'll be behind you sometimes. But in the suburbs, it's worse because, you know, those rich towns and mansions and shit. So they're thinking, okay, this person should not be here. Some uh, go behind them and see how they react. I can't stress enough. You got to remain calm. If you're using the GPS, the GPS will usually show you what the speed limit is. Try to go at least three miles under the speed limit, but not go. If it's 50, don't go below 40. If it's if you were doing 48 and the cop comes up behind you. Don't go below four. Uh, don't go above 48. But make sure you don't go, try not to go below 45 too much. In other words, you want to show that you don't give a fuck. You're doing the right thing. So you start slowing down too much. Now the cop is like, hmm, what's up with that? <laughs> of course, if you go faster, now they're like, oh, okay, well, you know, I think these motherfuckers might be up to something any goddamn way. So uh, they went one mile above the speed limit. I got them. Let me see what else. Let me see if I can find some cocaine, some fentanyl on them. Or if they're wanted for warrants or if they got burglary tools on them or some shit like that, you know? You just got to remain calm. But anyway, you go to these private schools. They're off the beaten path. Private schools, high-class universities. I'm telling you, they get to the best schools. Because they get the money so they can afford to pay for private schools for their children to go with white people that's why when you go to these places you'll see white people 
Mongol type Asians, black East Indian Asians. And then you might see some Hakims, a smidgen of African, a smidgen of Caribbean, and you hardly see us because we usually can't afford to pay 35000 or even 17000 extra dollars for a private school. But see, that's part of the reason, and I said this on videos years ago, that's part of the reason why the kid, your kids, or the kids that go to private school come out and they're already ahead of the game. Because private school on your resume college degree college uh credentials and resume it says i'm not broke and i'm cultured that's what it says i'm not starving i'm not begging for a job some of them might be begging to get into a certain <clears throat> university but usually they got the hookup on that But even if they don't get into their preferred, even their second and third choices are still going to be better than many of our best choices, <laughs> whether it's because of academics or just because of money. I mean, usually it's, with us, it's about money. So then once they graduate a college, they can see on your resume you went to such and such private school. The more prestigious, the more excited the employer becomes. The more prestigious the university, the more excited the employer becomes. So now they know that you come from some kind of money and you don't need them. They might need you. So they're already set. And of course, when you come from some kind of money, you don't have to be worth millions. You can just be good making a couple of hundred thousand, three hundred thousand a year. And you can send your kids to private schools. Depending on how you're living. But they know automatically that we'll take this person. They're good. For the most part. And this is what the Asians do. They're in the white world. This is why they sound white. When I was in the white world, I sounded white. Some people might say I still do. I mean, I, I sound it right. And the truth be told, I wanted to impress my white friends. And in an Uncle Tom way, that's why I tell people when I was a little kid, I was a uh, Uncle Tom. Because I thought if it wasn't white, it wasn't right. I wanted to impress the white friends. I said, you know, I want to show them that, hey. I'm like you. I'm not like uh, somebody else. But even when I was a little kid, I never heard of a black exploitation movie. Never saw one. So not because by choice, just because I just never had. <laughs> so I didn't know those shits existed. Um, <laughs> oh, boy, somebody's coming. Um <clears throat> Hold on a second, somebody's coming. They're not coming for me, they're just getting in the car. I just don't want them looking at me while I'm doing this. But, um. <laughs> but this is what they do they come in, they go to these high level schools. They don't. See, like where I'm living is nice, but even this is not. This is something that they would get just to send their kids to. But where they live at is fucking mansions, gated communities. Better than what Tariq Nasheed has. This is what they're about. This is what's going on. This is what you see in Asia. And you know the Jap Japanese are rich, but yet... Again, that was another nation that went to war with the U.S. trying to, and, and even attacked the United States. 
And now they run Hawaii. Ain't that a bitch? They attacked the shit. Now they're running the shit. But it's still a part of the United States. But yet, if we had attacked the shit, they would never let us run the shit. But see, it, 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 don't you find that shit crazy? They will go to war with people. Nuclear bomb them. <laughs> and then still let them come in here and run and own shit. Now, of course, if they hadn't, we wouldn't have had any PlayStation, Nintendos, and Sony and shit. But, but it's crazy. When you think about this, though, the Asians are supplying white countries and Chinese cheap products in, in a lot of the third world with most of our shit. You think about this shit. You wouldn't have a fucking computer to use. This is this cell phone in my hand. <laughs> if they didn't make this shit, we wouldn't have it. That's how crazy this shit is. I mean, the other funny part is the motherfucking machines uh, that's used to make the chips come from Europe. But yet, for some odd reason, the Europeans don't make the chips. Shit come out of Taiwan and Taiwan is earthquake prone. And, and typhoon uh, prone. It's crazy. And they keep talking about what they want to do to China and all this type of shit. Don't listen to them. That's, that's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. But see, this is the problem I have. It's, it's, it's just that when you read about what they did to us all the time, to the, the keep shutting us down, and then these other people come over here and say, man, how come you people can't do your thing? You people are lazy. You people don't want to do this. I'm like, man, motherfucker, do you know history in this country or do you even give a fuck? You let everybody else do everything but us. It's fucked up. Countries they went to war with or claim that they're about to go to war with. You got Japan. I told you about the Koreas. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. So-called Arab countries. Even poor I was listening to the Tariq Nasheed not, uh, the other night. And again, I don't want to say they must be listening to my videos, but who's the only one telling you that Puerto Ricans bomb the motherfucking capital? Terrorizing, trying to take over this shit. But yet, there's no problem with them. Well, not as much of a problem. We never attack anybody in this country. We, <clears throat> we had to defend ourselves. From attacks. And we still get shit on. For all these other people are essentially freeloaders. I don't understand the fucking game plan. And why does the United States have to be the multicultural place? But yet you can't go to India or China. And force multicultural uh, shit on them. Now the Chinese they might throw in some uh, Africans as tokens. Just because they say hey. We're in Africa, so we'll bring you to China and teach you some business shit. Because I've seen one video about some, I think it was from Ghana or some shit like that. Went to China to learn how to be a business guy. He's supposed to be owning some textile business out in China. So I don't know how deep that is in truth, but I bet you when they tell his ass, okay, we had enough of your ass, you can get the fuck out of here now. Uh, I bet you he'll get his ass out of there. <clears throat> in China and in India, those are fucking countries, even though India is a multiracial shit with a black base, and I never hesitate to tell them that. I don't give a fuck what they say. They're intolerant of outsiders. Like I said, you got places in India. Regions in India, India, where you have Mongol Asians that are Indians. 
and they openly discriminate against them in stores and call them names and shit and say that they're not Indian, but they're Indian. They speak the languages and shit. They're Indian citizens. Obviously, you know, they're uh, Mongol, Asian, Chinese looking. Because th deep down, they know that they're fucking black Asians and not Mongol. It's another thing. I still find it weird that they're so fucking close together. Two very distinct looking individuals, even though the constant is the shiny jet black hair. Very odd. But you got the quotas, systems uh, all over the world and all over this country. It seems like Asians are on top and that includes the white man. And they keep us on the bottom. We'll see uh, where this type of shit is going. Where it's heading. Um, but if you, if you look at movies and TV shows and shit, it almost looks like I'm not seeing us anymore, too, too much anymore. That might be uh, part of the future. You know, they always say they try to uh, do the predictive programming. <laughs> Maybe that's the part of it. And when you put the rest of the world on your team, you pick them to be on your team and give them uh, some good pay. You can bet that they'll uh, help the white man out. And then I asked everybody else. After we're gone, then what? Where does that leave you? Because somebody's got to be on the bottom. Somebody's got to be the scapegoat. And the shit that Tariq Nasheed was talking about with that Puerto Rican guy. I swear he must have been listening to my shit because he doesn't have, they don't have Puerto Ricans over there in California. <clears throat> so he doesn't know how they are. He got to hear the shit from people like me. How these Puerto Ricans are. Now, I, even, I even wonder about that call because I mean, I, I, like I tell you, man, Puerto Ricans don't be going around calling themselves black. Trying to talk about reparations. That shit sounded crazy. But, um... It is what it is. It's crazy, man. It's fucking November now. This shit is getting damn near 80 degrees and shit. It's fucking crazy. So... With that being said... I think I more or less said what I had to say. And if I missed it... I'll try to get back to it on the next one. So with that, I'm out.